Okay, it is time now. I am going to build a image classifier using my own images. I am going to teach this example to not say acoustic guitar or electric guitar, but to say ukulele. And I'm going to teach this example not to say syringe, but to say train whistle. Okay, this is what we're going to do. And the process that I'm going to use is transfer learning. I described this process in the previous video. You can go back and watch that if you want, or you could just keep following with me. I'm gonna write the code for this. Now, one thing that I wanna mention is, uh, you might be wondering like, oh, why is it called a feature extractor? Or how does like, why is it, why, how does this stuff happen? So I wanna first mention and thank Gene Kogan for making the image classification and regression transfer learning with MobileNet examples. You can find these sort of like native tensorflow.js versions of what I'm doing right now here at the ML4A machine learning for artists uh, website. It's a wonderful website with tons of resources about machine learning. And also I just, it's an interesting, the whole uh, discussion here in terms of like, well, how should the ML5 API work and what should things be called? So if you're curious about how open source projects choose their th names of things, uh, I might reference this particular thread. But uh, the important piece for us is to be at the ML5 website on the feature extractor documentation page. I'm gonna to need to make heavy use of this page to look up what the, what the names of all the functions I need to type are in. And then of course I should mention, if I just go down here to under examples, classifier with feature extractor, this is basically what I'm gonna build. But I'm gonna, the point of this video is I'm gonna build it from, I'm gonna build it up, but you could, you could just look at this example instead if you want. But anyway, all right. So let's go back to, uh, let's go back to the feature extractor documentation page. Um, what I've got here is the code that I wrote from a previous video, a couple videos ago, using the mobile net model to classify images from the webcam. Okay, so if I go to the code, the main thing that I need to change is I no longer want to make an ML5 image classifier. I want to make an ML5 feature extractor. And there, and, and the difference here also is I'm not going to reference the video yet. So I'm just gonna make a feature extractor built on top of MobileNet and this callback model ready means the, fee the model has been loaded, the MobileNet model was downloaded from wherever it needed to download it from and it's there and ready to go, okay? Um, so this should say model is ready, I'm gonna get rid of this predict function. So now if we just refresh this, I mean a lot of stuff's gonna break here, but I see model is ready and the video appears. Now there's no labels anymore because I got rid of the image classifier. I have a feature extractor now. But I want an image classifier. So what I do is I'm gonna add a variable. Um, I'm gonna write a variable called classifier. So mobile net, the variable mobile net is now referring to the feature extractor and the classifier equals mobile net, the feature extractor dot classification. So I wanna make a class classification. I want to make a classification object from the feature extractor, and I need to give that, I wanna say, and I wanna use images from the video. So, and again, now if I were doing this with a database of JPEGs that I'm loading or something else, I would do it in a different way, but I'm gonna use the video in this example. So I'm gonna say video, and then I'm gonna say video ready, because I wanna have a callback also to know that the video is ready. I don't really need that callback, but it's sort of useful. Uh, I'm gonna write that up here, video ready, and I'm gonna say a video is ready. So let's refresh this again, and we should see my image pop up, model's ready, video's ready. Okay, now we are ready to train our own labels, right? We have the feature extractor, we have the classifier, we can give it images of a ukulele. And if I, written, I don't know if I wrote this on the board just now or earlier or when, but I, I used to have ukulele spelled wrong. It's spelled U-K-U-L-E-L-E. -L -E. I, I don't know why, but I feel like that's very important to say right now. <laughs> okay, so how do I do that? Well, um, I could look up in the uh, feature extractor page. There's a function called add image. And, um, and it's right here. So I kind of, I, I, I know some of this API from having practiced this a little bit, but this is what I'm looking for, add image. What image, add image and a label. So I can say, oh, but when do I want to add an image? I want to make a button that every time I press the button, I, uh, it adds, it, I'm saying that's a ukulele image. So let's first create a uke button. And then I'm gonna say in setup, uke button equals create button ukulele, ukulele 
But if it's uke, it's just U-K-E. Boy, it's confusing. Now here's the thing. I am creating this example in a very basic, what I hope is beginner-friendly way. There are so many ways you can build an interface and style your page and handle events. Um, I'm just going to use sort of simple P5 functions that place a button on the page and a simple callback for a uh, function for when I press the button. Um, um, so then I'm going to say you pressed, mouse pressed, and this is where, and I could put the function name here and write the function somewhere else, which I do in some videos to be kind of, but I'm just going to put an anonymous function in here. The idea of this anonymous function is when I press the button, this function should be executed. So the code I'm writing in here will happen when I press the button. And what do I want to do there? I want to say classifier, add image, uh, and I want to give it a la uh, label, ukulele. I hope that's spelled right. <laughs> so now, whenever I press the button, it's a ukulele. And you know, let's add a train whistle one while we're at it. Uh, let's say a whistle button. And let's do exactly the same thing, but with a whistle button. Whistle button. <laughs> uh, create button. I'm going to have the button say whistle. I cannot spell anything. Uh, whistle button and then uh, add image whistle. So you can see here I have two buttons. Ukulele makes, adds an image assigned the label ukulele. Whistle adds an image, assign the label whistle. Now, I, there's not really much point to me running this code. I should just make sure I have no errors. But we can see the buttons are there now. The image comes up, but nothing's going to happen. Um, like, I can keep pressing this ukulele button. I can keep pressing this whistle button. Nothing's happening because I'm not giving myself any feedback. So right now, I just have to hope it's working. But the thing that I need to do next, right, is actually apply a training step. Now, one thing that was interesting, I showed in the previous video the Teachable Machine. Um, this project, and I'm basically making exactly the same thing. Train green, train purple, train orange. My buttons are train ukulele, train whistle. But it just started to work immediately. That's because there's a slightly different algorithm at play here. The algorithm that I'm using requires, in ML5, requires an additional step, a training step. I'm going to write this here, training. So basically, the process is add a bunch of images. Say, hey, this is a ukulele, this is a ukulele, this is a ukulele, this is a whistle, this is a whistle, this is a ukulele, this is a whistle, this is a ukulele. Once I've added all those images, then I explicitly I say, I'm done with all of these images. I'm going to let the model retrain itself, train itself using those, the features that it extracted of those images and map those features basically to these labels. And by map, I really mean there's like another machine learning model right here. It's actually like a neural network model. Um, and so that mapping between the features and the new labels happens with another neural network here. But ML5 and TensorFlow.js are handling all of that for us. Okay, now let me come back over here and add the training step. So I certainly need one more button. Uh, train choo-choo button. Uh, so I'm going to add that button. Create button, uh, train button. Train, I'm going to say train, uh, train button. Uh, oh, okay, now here. Now what am I doing in here? Ha, ah, okay. What I'm doing in here is I'm going to say cla oh, classifier.train. So I'm going to say, hey, classifier train yourself. Now I could just leave it at this and kind of say like, hey, great, I'm done. But something that I, prob that I should do here is I can actually give a, put a call back inside of here. Now this is getting pretty awkward. I'm going to allow it. And you know what, actually though, I'm going to make a separate function just for right, because I might want to do a bunch of things. I'm going to say, uh, is I'm going to call it like while training. So I just want to put this in a separate function so I can just for, uh, so I can look at it on its own. What did I call it? While training. So this function while training is a function that's going to kind of run over and over again during the training process. And it's going to report back to me information about the training process. And the information it's going to report to me is something called loss. Loss. Let's just actually run this. And then I'm going to explain what loss is. Let's, let's, let's see if I can get this to work so far. So I'm going to refresh. <laughs> my model is ready. My video is ready. I have a ukulele. 
I can press ukulele, ukulele, ukulele. I'm gonna show it a lot of ukuleles. Here's a lot of examples of ukuleles. Now I'm gonna hold up my train whistle. Here's a lot of examples of train whistles. <laughs> now I'm gonna hit the button train. And yes, we see this number here in the console. It's training and training and training. While training, console log this value loss. What is the loss? So loss is a really important term in machine learning, data science. It's often also called cost. And by this, I mean loss function or cost function. And what the loss function or cost function is calculating is the error. So what do I mean by error? So basically, if I say to the machine learning model that's, tra that's training, hey, here's a ukulele. This is a ukulele, but just pretend you don't know what it is for a second. What do you think it is? And if it comes back and says, I think it's a ukulele, guess what? The error is zero. If it comes back and says, I think it's a train whistle, then the error is not zero. It's something else. But something that I haven't really mentioned, because we're kind of living above the fray here, we're talking in terms of labels. The machine learning model underneath the hood is just working with number, numbers. The labels are only a thing for us, the human being, to use at sort of the end of the process. So when it's actually calculating an error, even if it guesses it's a ukulele, it's calculating an error based on the numeric probability that it guessed. So the machine learning model might think, oh, okay, that's 80% likely to be a ukulele. So that might be the right answer, but we know the right answer is it's 100% a ukulele. So the error is actually the difference between 100%, 80%, or 0.2. So this idea of the aggregate error of all of the training images over time, ML5 and TensorFlow Digest is calculating that for you during that training process. And we're seeing that here. There's a clock tick tocking because I have a clock sound effect for some unknown reason. We can see that that loss is getting very, very low. So you want the error to be low. The error started kind of high. It was like 6.92, and then it got lower and lower and lower as it was training. And one thing you'll notice is eventually it stopped. Now, it's an arbitrary decision. When do you stop training? ML5 has kind of default settings. It's going to train for a while until the loss is a certain amount or something like that. But you can see when it's finished, it gives you the lull as the, the loss as null. The lull. The loss as null. So I can actually say here, if loss equals null, console.log, training, oh, I'm going to say like training complete, else. I can console.log the loss, and then guess what? When the training is complete, what do I want to do? I want to classify. So I'm going to say classifier.classify.results. And I already have the got results function, right? The same got, I'm getting, the, I'm getting results just like I got results from the raw mobile net model, but now I'm getting the results uh, from my new transfer, learn, trains, custom trained model. So I say classifier.classify got results. I get the results if there's an error. Otherwise, I can give the class name to the label to get drawn on the screen. And then what do I want to do again? I want to say classifier.classify. So um, before it was called predict. Uh, now it's called classify. I'm not sure why. <laughs> Maybe that at some point we, you know, check the code that goes along with this video to see if that's changed. But that's what it is right now. Okay. So I think we're actually done with this example, sort of. Let's try. Okay, model is ready. Video is ready. Oh boy. Uh, what's the chance that this is going to work? <laughs> you know, stop and like guess. I, I, I give it like 10 to 1 this works. Okay, let's, uh, I'm going to step out of the frame and I'm going to train it with a bunch of images of a ukulele. I'm going to move the ukulele around to give it a lot of different examples further back. Now, and again, I should probably add something that shows me how many training examples, because I probably want to give the, around the same number of training examples for the whistle as with the ukulele. I'm going to train this. Whistle, 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 whistle. Now I'm going to hit train. It, when it's done, we should start seeing labels. Training complete. Hmm, I don't see any labels. <laughs> no labels. That's so sad. What did I do wrong? Okay, so something's wrong. I got to figure this out. I got to debug this. All right, I really should put console.log results in because I don't even know if this function is being called. Let's make sure .classify is the right name of the function. 
uh, classify, callback, yeah. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Pr yeah, callback, callback. And then the callback is a function, otherwise it can blah, blah, blah. So I think this is right. Um, I, everything looks right to me. Um, am I just like not drawing the label properly? No, there, there it is, label. This is me not paying close attention. Uh, this is interesting and this is now a, a question for the ML5 library itself. But the, uh, the thing that comes in the got results function is actually just the label that it guesses. So there's not like the class name and the probability, all that stuff that came with MobileNet. It's not giving us all of that information, which probably makes sense. So actually, all I want to do is say uh, label equals result. So, so that was a little bit of a digression. I had to figure out like what I did wrong there. Now, this should work. Okay, ready? Let's try it with the ukulele. Ukulele, give it a lot of your, give me a lot of examples of a ukulele. Uh, <laughs> giving it a lot of examples of a whistle. Now I'm going to train it. I'm going to do my training dance. And training is complete. Here's a ukulele. It is a ukulele. It is a whistle. It is a ukulele. It is a whistle. Yay, okay. <laughs> so this actually works. Here's the thing. I want to show you something more interesting here. And it's not more interesting. I'm going to show you something different. I'm going to change this to, I'm going to leave all the variable names the same, but I'm going to change this to smile. I'm going to change this to happy. I'm going to change this to sad, sad, okay? So, and I'm going to run this again, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to up the get up, a knee smiling. Then I'm going to hit train, let it train for a little bit, it's finished. I mean, how long should I do that for? This is pretty cool. Here's the thing. I don't, it doesn't just have to be image recognition. I can sort of train it with different facial expressions. The fact that MobileNet, what MobileNet is really good at, if you recall, is taking an image and boiling it down to a smaller list of numbers that kind of define the essence of that image. So it doesn't matter what the content is, it can sort of figure out the essence of me smiling, the essence of me frowning. You know, it is, it is important though to remember, it's not really learning smiling or frowning. It's kind of, um, and if I were to turn this like this way, you can sort of see some of the room here, and I go here. It's not working so well, because it kind of learned all that. It learned sort of like all that stuff with the background. So there's a lot of nuance to this, and it's really important to remember. It's not some magic. It doesn't understand. The computer doesn't have some like, some like understanding of emotions. It's really just looking at, I've got a new image, and I'm comparing it to a bunch of images I got before. What's it most similar like? Let's see if it sort of, now that I move the camera around, is it working? So here's the thing. You now have something. This is, this is the thing. Go, go forth, add a third category. <laughs> Make a project, make a game where I'm playing Pong. Actually, this is a project I should reference by um, Alejandro. Let me go to ml5js.org. Alejandro, under experiments, uh, made a project called uh, Pong ML, which basically used the same exact technique to train with various like hand gestures, and then you could play Pong with hand gestures. So there's so many possibilities of what you could do just from being able to train using starting with the mobile net model and applying transfer learning. <sighs> okay, are you with me? Did this make sense? Make something. Go and try this. Make your own version of it. Um, really think about the interface and, you know, one more thing. <laughs> something you're really going to want to do, and you probably noticed this, like every time I restarted the sketch, I had to like retrain it with images again, which is fun for the sort of like real-time interactive nature of this. But if you actually want to 
if you're actually gonna do this for a while and you're building an installation or something, you've trained it with a bunch of images and you want to, I don't know, <laughs> save the model that you've done, save all that work, um, you're gonna to wanna to save and be able to reload the, the result of that transfer learning. Um, at present, at the time of this recording, there isn't a way to do that easily with the ML5 library. It's really technically possible. There is a GitHub issue. Currently, it is ML5 library issues 174 with a discussion about this feature. Certainly, once this feature exists, I will come back and make a video to show you how to do that, okay? Thanks for watching this um, video. Oh, I'm gonna do one more video. I'm gonna do something interesting. I'm gonna do the, I mean, hopefully. <laughs> I'm going to do one more video with something very similar to what I did just here, but I'm going to do something called a regression. So I'm going to define what a regression is and show you how I can do transfer learning with the mobile net model to perform a regression. Why would I want to do that? I don't know. I guess you'll have to watch. Basically a slider. If I want to like be able to control something with my hand moving back and forth as a slider, that's something that I can use a regression for. All right. See you there.